Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie and welcome to video number five in the Japan series. We are starting our second week on the cruise, kicking it off in Kanazawa, Japan. In Kanazawa, we booked the Holland America excursion to go to the Kenroku and Garden and Omnica Market. So once again, back on the bus with about 38 other guests. The first stop was the Kanazawa Castle. Now we only had about 15, 20 minutes here, just a chance to walk around on the grounds and get a view. It's a great castle. You actually can go inside if you wanted to spend more time there. It has a moat around it, and then it has a large complex all around it. So this is kind of the map to show you all the different areas you can explore. But our purpose was really to get to the garden. So we entered the garden and they have this incredible fountain. Now this is just fed by gravity. So this is from centuries ago. They figured out how having a higher pond can make a fountain below it. Then the garden's beautifully landscaped with a lot of interesting lanterns throughout it. Now if you're a Zelda fan, you're going to recognize some of these lanterns from the game. On the site, there's also an arts and crafts museum. Because the time allowed, we were able to go inside. This is dedicated to different arts and crafts from a around Japan, both textiles, uh, there's some Buddhist temples, but I was really re interested in the lacquer work and how that evolved and how gold leaf became so popular. So there was this great exhibit about how they make gold leaf, the uses for gold leaf, including that it was used as pressing powder for geishas uh, centuries ago, and that it's so delicate you have to use chopsticks. Now this is important because gold leaf soft serve ice cream is a huge draw just outside the entrance to the garden, and of course we had to try it. I got the matcha flavor, which is green tea. Then it was time to head to the market. This was one of the smaller markets we visited, so we decided to just grab a lunch. So we ordered a mixed sushi bowl, and then I ordered something I didn't know what it was, and it ended up being some very interesting items made from fish paste. Our next port of call was Busan, South Korea, so I was very excited. This is my first time visiting South Korea, and Busan is a beautiful city. We hired a private guide through tours by locals and headed to the Ocean Temple. Statues dedicated to the different signs of the zodiac line the entrance, so you can look up which zodiac you are by checking your birth year. Then you come across a large pagoda that was donated by taxi drivers throughout Busan. You can see the tire there in the left for safekeeping. Now, this is why this temple is famous. It's one of the few oceanfront Buddhist temples in the world, and it's absolutely gorgeous. So this gentleman is who people pray to on the 49th day after someone dies for safe passage into heaven. There's also another game where you can try to throw a coin into a bowl to make your wish come true, and then you enter the most beautiful temple in Korea. So they have two different temple areas with Buddha. So there's three Buddhas here. One is dedicated to healing. The temple was decorated with a lot of dragon motifs because the dragon is known for being related to water and the ocean. And then there's also a reclining Buddha temple. Again, reclining Buddha is a little more rare. And then this is Happy Buddha, or as our tour guide called it, the Santa Buddha. You can also head up these treacherous stairs if you want an even better view of the ocean temple. There's a tiny Buddha that if you put water over it three times, it's said to cleanse your soul. Now back into the car and headed back across Busan. So many interesting buildings and bridges. There was one bridge that went in a full circle. Then we made it to the Gamchian Cultural Village. Now this area used to be a refugee area during the Korean War as people moved from Northern Korea to Southern Korea to escape the fighting. Then they invited artists to come in and take over some of the empty homes as time passed on and revitalize the area with public art and murals. The government also started adding more tourist infrastructure and now this area is a colorful, vibrant community with a lot of shops and restaurants, artist galleries, so they've really created a wonderful tourist attraction. After the village, we headed to the traditional market and the international market to try some Korean food. That is fish cakes, rice cakes and fish cakes and tempura, as well as a seaweed wrapper around some vegetables and rice. All of it was very good, though the fish cake, cake texture was a little much for me. This is the international market, and just outside of that, we found this incredible dessert. So they have dough right here. They form it into small patties that they fry in front of you, slightly sweet. They add some sugar to the outside to make it extra crispy and sweet, and then they fill it with a nut mixture. It's terrific. It's one of my favorite things I ate during our whole journey. Our next stop was Arturo 
Japan. Because we had been in South Korea, we had to go through entrance formalities with the Japanese immigration officials. So you had to get up at 6 a.m., get a time, come back later. That took most of the morning. So we finally headed out into the port about noon, 1245. We found a restaurant near the canal for lunch. I, of course, ordered the barbecue pork ramen, which I am now addicted to, and the goiza, which I'm going to miss terribly now that we're back in the States. We booked a canal cruise, so we just walked up. They had availability on the 2 p.m. tour. So it was a 45-minute tour up and down the canal just to get a brief history about when this used to be the warehouse district um, to bring goods in from the ocean port to the local communities. And then after the canal cruise, we headed to the Arturo Beer Pub and Gallery. So we were very surprised to walk in and feel like we are in a traditional German beer hall. But the beers were very good, and of course, we had to try the pretzels. On the walk back to the ship, we found one of these famous Japanese vending machines. Uh, sadly, the food was frozen, <laughs> so we didn't get to try it. Our next stop was in Almori. We booked the Almori and Archaeology Holland America Shore Excursion here. So that triangle building was actually part of the shore excursion. And then here's just a view of Almori from the ship as we arrived. The greeters were very fun here. The large hands were so enthusiastic. We felt very welcome. So again, back on the bus. Now, one tip about these buses, head all the way to the back if you can. Some of the areas are a little bit bigger. So first stop was a Buddhist temple. They had these dry gardens. So basically using rocks and gravel and low water plants to create a beautiful landscape. The entrance was filled with flags. There was a lot of decorations. Buddha's birthday is coming up. So they're getting ready to celebrate. The entrance hall, you could go inside. You just had to take off your shoes and you could walk around and see a lot of the relics and things that had been donated to the temple. My favorite thing was walking all the way to the back where there was this beautiful mural highlighting Buddha and some of the followers and disciples of Buddha. Then it was time to head past the five-story pagoda, which you have a great view of here with some of the weeping cherry trees. And then this is the view from the deck just outside the hall. We were so excited that the weeping cherry trees were still in bloom in this area. This little, you rub this little knob and that is supposed to give you a long life. That's why it's a little silver, you know, a little gold compared to the rest of the statue. And then this area was dedicated to praying for children. This is where you wash your hands, uh, cleanse yourself as you prepare to the enter the temple. You could also make a donation to hit this large bell. Uh, we declined, but here we are walking up to the seated Buddha. So you can just see how large it is um, compared to some of the trees in the beautiful area. And then this Buddha was dedicated to war victims. So on the first floor, you can go inside and walk around. And then the second floor under the Buddha is dedicated to war victims. These are also memorials um, to people who have died in the Korean War and other wars worldwide. So that is what makes this temple a little bit different. Then we headed to the fanciest lunch I've ever had on a regular excursion. It was at this beautiful wedding hall and we basically got like little samples. So it was like three different appetizers and then three different entrees. So you got a little taste of some specialties throughout the region. And then this cherry blossom dessert, that is an actual cherry blossom that had been preserved in salt. Now it's time for the archaeology portion of the tour. So we headed to this area that had been an archaeological dig site after they found some remains while they were building a baseball stadium and they kept some of the digs. So this is 5,000 year old dirt with pottery remnants in it. On the rest of the site, they have recreated what they think was there based on what they found throughout the dig. So the different buildings, uh, they recreated this huge tower. They found six large holes holes, which you can actually go in and see. So they preserved the holes that they found and they hypothesized that a large tower was built from these, maybe a lookout tower. These were set to recreate the graves. There were a lot of graves found around the area. There's also a museum you can visit that has relics that they have found during the site. They've recreated these vases based on the fragments they found. And then here is the actual wood that they found within the big holes for that tower. Back to Aspam. Aspam, this is the tourist information center and you go in and we watched a couple videos about winter in Japan and then a Japanese festival. Up on the 13th floor, you can find an observation deck. This is an extra charge, but it was included in our excursion. On the first floor, there is a sake and beer bar.
if you wanted to taste more local beers. Then we headed to a museum dedicated to the Dubuta Festival. So this museum is gorgeous. I loved the architecture of this museum. And then you head inside to learn more about the festival. So the festival takes place each year in the summer and these incredible floats are built. So this is a large float on a platform that people will pull on wheels. So it's extremely heavy. The floats are built from wire and then paper is put over it and then hand painted. This museum is definitely worth a stop and was a favorite from a lot of people we talked to. It was like a behind the scenes into an incredible parade. They even had a movie that gave you more information. Next stop was Hakodate, Japan, again in the Northern Islands. And here we are as we pulled into port. Now this was my favorite protocol on the whole cruise. I don't know what specifically it was about it, but I just felt welcome here. It definitely had a lot of things I wanted to explore more and we just had a great day. So we booked a shore excursion through Holland America. The first stop was at this warehouse district, which had incredible shops and the local burger joint. So our tour guide recommended we give it a try. So we headed inside and tried a general cheeseburger. It had very good flavor. It has this like tomatoey sauce and it's more like a hamburger steak than our normal hamburger. Then we headed up to Mount Ruku. Now the ropeway was closed due to high winds, but we were able to take a bus up for the incredible views. But one benefit of taking the bus up is we passed this incredible grove of cherry blossom trees. It was so much fun to end our trip with cherry blossoms. Then it was time to go to the morning market. Now this was a huge morning market. It's only open till about two o'clock daily. We parked a little bit away from it, walked up to it, but we were parked very close to the ship. So the ship is parked very close to the morning market and you can head right in there from the ship. So this excursion, the warehouse and the morning market would be very easy to do on your own. You wouldn't need to book an excursion. So we wandered around the market, checking out all the seafood, crabs, scallops, all kinds of fun options. This was one of the larger markets we visited during our stay, so I highly recommend it if you're looking for unique souvenirs or just want to learn more about the food culture. Also, look down as you're walking around Hakodate. They have these adorable <laughs> little covers. We, of course, had to stop at the local brewery. Once again, walking in, it feels very much like a German beard hall, and the beers were very good. Then walking back to the ship, we got one more look at the beautiful cherry blossoms. So that was it. That was our two-week cruise on Holland America. Hopefully you've subscribed so you've seen all the videos as part of this Japan series. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to help.